What is going on guys? My name is Tony Leon. For those of you who don't know, I am a television host and tobacconist, which is the perfect pairing for this video because today we are gonna be reacting to an episode from one of my favorite shows called Most Expensivist, hosted by none other than 2 Chains, in which here we have him smoking a cigar that is, well, the most expensivist. So without further ado, let us begin. Actually, hold on. Now we can begin. I've got my smoking jacket. I've got my 2 Chains. We're ready for the lounge. Let's begin. So we moved into the members lounge. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it's a nice lounge. What we here is a selection of essentially the best experience that we have to offer for the pal. Um, so this is the Davidoff Oro Blanco. Ooh, boy. Obviously white gold in Spanish. Obviously there's no gold in this. And I feel like he's got to preface that because it's two chains we're talking to, you know? To his credit, there are cigars that I know of that actually have like gold flaking on the outer leaf or they'll come in like a golden foil. So. It is a fair point to mention, but the Davidoff Oro Blanco, this is a $500 cigar. It's, yeah, the most expensive, it's all right. You, 20 year old Puerto Rican rum. Oh so I'm Davidoff jealous that Oro he gets Blanco to host the show. Is the like, this is something that I would love to do. Master Blender Eladio Diaz. The cigar is grown on a square mile of land in the Dominican Republic, and it's a place where three different rivers come together to meet, which creates the fertile, rich soil, which allows this kind of product to be made. The tobacco was harvested in 2002, and they were only produced one time. So it's very exclusive. 100% exclusive. This is probably one of the rarest cigars in the United States market. You're talking about Eladio Diaz one of the best master blenders out there. You're talking about these three rivers that cultivate this this soil, and you're talking about a 20-year-old cigar. And people ask, like, you know, are these cigars worth it? $500, is that worth it? Here's what I'll say. What were you doing in 2002? I would think I was like, nine years old? You think about how much time that's passed, not just, you know, the years, but what you were doing at that time, how you grow and matured and developed in life. That's ideally what the tobacco was doing, you know, but it was just doing it in a different way. So it's just kind of cool to smoke history. Would I spend $500 to smoke that cigar? No, but would I do it to smoke on camera with two chains? Yes. So that's kind of what you're asking yourself. Is this worth the experience at hand? And if you could do that more than not, you'll stop thinking about cigars as far as like a monetary value and more so uh, an experience. And for me, when it comes to my money, I spend money on experiences. This cigar we sell at about for $500 a stick. Yeah. Oh wow, look at that. It's almost nothing. <laughs> These 500 a piece? Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, it's 5,000 then. Five bands for that box. Five thousand dollars. Yep. Five thousand dollars. I mean, that's now. Cause maybe later on it can go for more. I well, mean, of course. That, if it's that exclusive. And that's for me. I don't really know the resale value of cigars like that. I'm not saying it doesn't exist, but this video was made a couple years ago. That cigar still goes for five hundred dollars on the market. Whatever something's worth is just whatever somebody's willing to pay for it. So there's that. If there's like a shortage, if, if they don't exist anymore. You might see that, but I personally haven't seen a cigar fetch way more than, you know, what it was retailed at. Tobacco, as long as you keep it well prepared, this, this cigars will last essentially forever. What's the best way to keep the these? Do you have to have a humidor to keep these? Yes, absolutely. Damn. <laughs> the preservation of the humidity. And I love how, like, he reacts as if, like, this is such a deal breaker for him. Like, oh, man, I got to have a humidor? Man, <laughs> how do you keep your weed? I'm not, let's just be honest. How do you keep your weed, 2 chains? Because the same way you can actually keep your weed is the same way you can keep your cigars. If you keep it in jars or, you know, Tupperware, put a humidity pack in there, call it a day. Temperature is crucial. So 70 degrees and 70% humidity is yes. essentially ideal. If the cigar gets too wet, um, the oils in the tobacco deteriorate and you lose some of the flavor. And if it's too dry, it'll burn hot and then it's harsh. We'll do all the work for you. What he just mentioned right there is the 70-70 rule. It's, you know, tried and true. 70% humidity, 70 degrees Fahrenheit. As long as you're within those margins, you're doing well. What's your most expensive membership here? Most expensive is 10000 Is that a month of or uh, it's one year? Oh. Okay. Okay. Our members get 10% discount off everything. In each of our yeah. locations, access to the members only lounge. Okay. Our lockers are maintained, spirit tastings, cigar tastings, our customer base, business owners are entrepreneurs. There's a lot of internal networking that is done through our membership. It's just kind of the community that we cultivate. That might seem like a, uh, a shocking price, $10,000 for membership. But like you said, it's a lifetime membership. I've seen memberships go in the $700, $800 to $1,000 or $1,200, depending 
depending on the lounge you go to. But what he mentioned right there is really key and that is the business side of it. If you are there for business purposes, right, you're marketing, you're networking, you're you know, trying to impress a client, that's where you'll see those things really pay off. So there's something about that 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 business practice side of it that I feel could be really lucrative and, and beneficial. Really what you're hoping for is that that lounge is going to be around in 10 years time because you know over 10 years, if, you, if it's there and you frequent it enough, yeah, it pays for itself and then some. But the tasting events, the lockers, all that stuff is pretty much expected when it comes to a membership. Really what you're trying to look for is that hole in the wall, speakeasy vibe to impress people to go to. Are you in your feelings about trying one? You wanna keep it perfect and Yeah, I mean, I would be, it's $500. <laughs> <laughs> and him and the but it's the most expensive. That's, uh, that's what I'm planning on sharing this with people. Of course, so. And he gets that box, like that's what I'm saying. I wanna host a show like this. I wanna get the box. In the factories, they will laugh at you if, like here, we pull out a cutter to cut the cigar. Um, and do it with the teeth? Exactly. Yeah. It is a product entirely made by hand, so why use a machine to cut it? Now, of course, I will not bite your cigar, I promise you. No, I wouldn't be biting a $500 stick on the cap either. I mean, if you're talking about a $5 stick, sure. But $500, I want that precision, all right? I want to know that I am smoking excellence because the draw is not messing up because I bit the cap. No way. I know people that do that. That's crazy. Properly to light the cigar, rather than cutting it, you light it first. In indirect heat, you basically start to warm up the oils in the outer end of the tobacco. They call this toasting. Is that a thing? Like toasting, of course, is the thing. I know that. But what he just did right there, where you lit the end of the cigar before you cut the cap. I don't know. Have you guys done anything like this? I mean, I, I personally have it. But I'm not hating on it. I'm just saying like it's it's different. I, I haven't done it. The idea is to draw the smoke into your mouth and taste it without breathing it into your lungs. Are you gonna cut it now? You know yeah. cut. Yeah, that's a V cut. Bring the smoke in. All right. I'll probably do a V cut it. here too. Like red wine again. You let it roll around the mouth. Breathe out through the nose. Much like food, if you don't activate the nose, you don't get most of the flavor. Activate the nose to embrace the flavor. Ooh, I like that. I like her. What he's talking about when it comes to activating the nose to embrace the flavor, like Amara Negra so elegantly put it, he's talking about retrohaling, you know, breathing out of the nose because your old factory senses are, this is like bro science here, I'm just telling you what I've heard, are like the closest things to your memory. And I always tell people, hey, whatever the first flavor that you can think that you're tasting on, on a cigar, go with that. Pull on that thread and, and see how much you can really pick out of that. Whether it's like a mushroom flavor, umami, or something even random like marshmallows or toasted hickory. Whatever that is, go for it, man. And, and see how it influences the rest of your palate while you're smoking that cigar. I mean, that's traditionally how you smoke a cigar and really enjoy the cigar is by activating your nose to embrace the flavor. I can't, I can't get that out of my head now. You would do that with this cigar because it's $500, you want all 500 of those dollars worth in that cigar. But I very rarely recommend retrohilling in like the first couple cigars that that person has because it really is a learned thing. Now, Two Chains may be used to blowing smoke out of his nose due to, you know, smoking other things, but it's very different when it comes to the smoke of a cigar because it's just pepperier a lot of times. It's, you know, packs more of a of a punch. I get why he did it here. I probably wouldn't do it for, you know, if I'm giving a cigar to a newbie. That's just me. Does this work like the joints to puff puff pass? Is it weird? Bad form to share cigars. Yeah. It, uh, that being said, no puff puff pass. a big part no. of enjoying the right cigar is when you feel is the right time and the right moment with the right people. So I never, never, ever would someone to try a cigar on my yes. behalf. You'll try it, you'll try it first. And what he said right there is it's key as well. I never try to push anybody on a cigar. Um, I might offer, but it's never something that I'm like, you gotta do this. This is something that either the person wants to try or they don't. Uh, I never push it on people because also I don't want to waste a cigar on you if you're not going to enjoy it, you know what I mean? But I will say, you don't puff puff pass, however, I think my very first cigar was a puff puff pass situation. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend puff puff passing with just anybody. You got to have a real 
special bond there. There's something about smoking another person's cigar that I just would not do. I have lipstick, you see? So this is solid yeah, I'm, I'm taking care of you. Go ahead. I love her. I wish, like, I wish somebody like her was with me every time I smoked a cigar just to hype me up. You just gotta do it. Man, yeah, just gotta do it. I gotta learn because these things that get you high, right? I mean, it just looks right. It looks like a beautiful This is what I'm talking about. For the people that don't really do it. know what you're doing when you're smoking a cigar, they're like, this is gonna get you high. What, what, you know? We'll take care of you, I promise. Come on, let's do it. Please go ahead. You do this. <laughs> well, it's, yeah. it's gotta taste amazing. Okay. I don't know how not to swallow How to not what? Good. Good. I had to stop my throat. Like, to... He's used to other things. What can you What can you say? As yeah, you can tell, I'm very good at this. <laughs> see? Yeah, you're very good. Say so. Let me see. Okay, so. Yeah, y'all yeah, know how to hit that mom. See, she knows what she's doing. When you have one of these, you can play on the Look at the way she's holding it, too. You're a natural. Yes. Yeah. I might, I might get into this. Yeah, she she knows what she's doing more than two chains. You get high, too, a little bit. Certainly know how to smoke. Well, you're shaking like a mother. <laughs> you know, something just happened. What do we learn here, guys? I think the first is uh, don't share your nicer products with uh, just anybody. Oh my gosh, the amount of times where I gave them that nice, you know, bottle of liquor or, or cigar to try, you would just see them down it or, or put the cigar out. Oh, it's infuriating. You know, you're like, what? I just, you don't even, because they can't appreciate it. That's, it is what it is. Even if it was two chains coming over my crib, I would not try to like wow him with an Opus X or anything like that. I would have started him, you know, much younger, smaller, uh, as far as price, you know, I get it why they did it here. It's called most expensive is for a reason, but it doesn't mean that you're gonna enjoy it that much more. If you don't know what you're doing, it doesn't matter the price tag. And I think that's the key thing to take away. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys like these reaction videos, let me know in the comments down below. On this channel, I try to uh, talk all things cigar culture and the beautiful community that makes it up. So if that interests you, give me a like and subscribe as well. But as always, keep it you, and I will see you in the next one.